Welcome to the Dr. Leadership Podcast, where the DR stands for Driving Results. Our focus is weekly conversations around life and business relationships and the important leadership qualities for both. These concepts and qualities will help you drive positive results in both your business and personal lives. A weekly connection point to help business leaders develop individual contributors, managers, and executives on your teams. We also will tie in concepts around family focus and life lessons to help you drive success in your personal life. Welcome to the Dr. Leadership Show. Let's get after it. Hey, welcome everybody. Another edition of the Dr. Leadership Podcast. Uh, The doctor is in. Uh, Good morning. Hope you're having a great day. Um, Wanted to jump right in today. And first and foremost, thank you for an outstanding week on downloads. Uh, We doubled up, which uh, which is a big deal for us. And uh, remember, you can reach out and give us feedback. Get it a lot personally from people I interact with with work and other companies that I engage with. And I appreciate that. Got to spend a week with 150 leaders inside my company out in Philadelphia. Got some positive feedback there. But reach out. Give us some insight. Remember, we can be reached at our email, which is at uh, drleadershipresults at gmail.com. Or you can check us out on the website. We have uh, some subscription services out there. Would love for you to check that out. $5 a month, early access to episodes, typically three or four in advance, and some great interviews. Uh, Posted one up there uh, two weeks ago from Tony Bridwell, world-famous author, has spoken in 44 different countries, uh, leads a large organization as the chief people officer and uh, chief talent officer. And I've got a big one getting ready to happen, too, that I'll talk about here in just a minute. But uh, you can check out the website at www.drleadershipresults.com. Check on subscription, takes you out to the Patreon site, all sorts of good stuff. So in this uh, meeting we had this week, we were very fortunate to have Commander Lippold, Kirk Lippold, Captain Kirk, who was the commanding officer of the USS Cole that was bombed by al-Qaeda um, terrorists in the port of Yemen um, in, on uh, 10-12 of 2000, a year before 9-11-2001. Something's going on there, right? 9-10-11-12. On 10-12, they tried to sink the coal. And on 9-11, they hit the, uh, hit the World Trade Center. So something was certainly going on there. But he spoke about how and has a great book out uh, on this entire story about um, what leadership is all about in a time of critical crisis. They lost 17 sailors that day, saved the ship, and uh, a great story that we'll touch on, uh, left the port with the star-spangled banner blowing, um, played the traditional one first, and then as they actually pulled out of the port, going by norn, uh, known kind of occupied territory by the terrorists. They played the Jimi Hendrix version. I love that. Then he turned over the speakers to the crew, and they played American Badass by Cat, uh, by Kid Rock as they sailed away. And I just think that's awesome. But the big news is, coming on the Leadership Lounge is Commander Lippold to spend an uh, hour, hour and a half with us here in the coming weeks. I'll get that out there. These are the types of things that you get access to by going on the subscription site. It's five bucks, man personal development. Get out and get after it. I invest um, hundreds of dollars a month, actually, on my development through periodicals, interactions, associations, etc. <clears throat> Remember, this stuff all doesn't come naturally to any of us. So look out there for help, uh, etc. So on to today's episode. The last couple of weeks, uh, you know, I jumped into change. You know, how a change will do you good. I, I called that episode the, the Winds of Change uh, to an old Scorpion song. Uh, about uh, the fall of the the Berlin Wall, et cetera. Great historical facts. Look into it. It's about what fascism really is, not what's uh, described on TV today. And uh, then after that, we went into the um, fresh start effect, which was about how you can drive your own development and uh, change, again, change-focused, when you clean your slate. Well, today I want to kind of go into a few things here, too. I had Had an interesting week. Had a great week of meeting with uh, and seeing in person uh, 150 people, some of which I haven't seen in five, six years. Uh, The pandemic certainly had an impact on that, but 
regular life uh, got a hold of all of us too. And just a, a great event. CEO was there, uh, executive vice presidents. We had people coming in from Japan uh, via webcast, et cetera. Great meetings. And it was just, everybody's pumped up. But this, uh, this week, I'm calling this Run To, Not From. And what this really is about is um, running toward change or crisis or a new opportunity versus running away or from something. We always describe first responders. I'm a huge, huge patriotic American. I believe it's the greatest country in the world. I think we have some freckles. I think that the press does nothing but try to break down this country and the people inside of it. I think that it's a sad, sad state uh, that we don't have people trying to uplift and bring the country together. But we always talk, and so I'm huge patriotic, and I'm a big first responder fan. Police, fire department, um, ambulance, uh, EMS people. And we often describe them as uh, our military veterans. When something starts to go down, those that run toward it to make a difference versus those that run away from it. Now, I am not saying in the business world or your personal lives that your life should be on the line necessarily and run toward those situations. Uh, fight or flight is a natural occurrence inside our makeup and let your body determine which you are there. But I do want to talk about how when things are not going your way or change is happening or something new is coming about, there's a couple different attitudes you can use. You can run towards it, embrace it, lean into it, as I often say, or you can run from it. And the outcome is determinant on which of those you decide to take. It really is about you know a story of self-development. That's what it's really about, is if you embrace, if you move toward, if you try to utilize new things coming at you to better yourself, you're going to get better. If you constantly are fearful of it or you fight it or that's not the way we did it in the past, that's not the way we used to do it, etc. Well, I can tell you that we used to live by candlelight. I can tell you we used to not have air conditioning. I can tell you we used to not be able to um, you know, have refrigeration in your homes. There's a lot of things that didn't used to be. Uh, you used to not be able to make popcorn in, in a minute and 20 seconds. You know, There's all sorts of things that you didn't used to be able to do that ended up being just A-OK -okay once you embraced it and you got used to it. But self-development is about embracing and taking on change. So there's two emotional responses to change, right? There's optimism and belief, which is what I choose to use. I'm a pretty happy person. I have some doldrums. All of us do. We can face things on a daily basis, um, relationship situations, friend situations, someone's diagnosed with an illness, people pass away. All of those things come at us every single day. Work can be hard. You can have a customer interaction issue. You can have something happen in your personal life that causes some financial stress. There's lots of things that come at us that can impact and have a drag or a headwind on optimism. But if you truly do lead your life appreciating what you have versus looking at what you don't have, you're going to do better. So there's two ways to look at life, optimistic and full of belief or pessimism and doubt. And optimistic people will typically run towards an opportunity and see the good in change and see what can happen that isn't happening today as a step forward. And typically those that run from it are more doubt, uh, doubtish and pessimistic. So think about this. To be the best you can be, you can't sit still. And that's true of anything. Choose anything that you feel your skill set is very good on and you've dedicated time to it. You've dedicated practice to it. You've dedicated self-development to it. You can't be stagnant. You can't repeat the same old stuff same old steps, and expect any different results. Remember, that's the old definition of insanity, right? Is to retain the same habits and, and expect some sort of different results. If you don't like the results, change your approach. Change your attack methodology. Change the direction of your attack. To use a sailing term again I used a few weeks ago, head into the wind a little bit instead of just running from it. And I think some good things can happen. So we've already discussed change is inevitable. Think about all the things that have changed in the last few years, right? In life, in business, 
Do any of us really think that the business world now will ever return to what it was pre-March of 2020? Not holistically. We have to get as close back to that as we can as far as normalization of getting back into the office, uh, going and seeing people, uh, attacking the day. We still got millions of people that are just trying to expect the government to send them money and, and they're going to be happy and survive that way. We've got to get our butts back in the seats of, of being productive citizens. There's, there's two groups in this world. There's producers and there's users. And the producers, uh, we're getting tired of the people that aren't re-engaging in society. We're tired of the gamers in the basement. We're tired of the people complaining that everyone, uh, everything wrong in the world is someone else's fault and that they need to be coddled and taken care of. I'm not a fan of that stuff. But it's not going to go back to what it was holistically. And I don't want it to go back to the business world and life to go back the same. I'm not necessarily talking about you know working from home. I think that's good. I've worked from home or been remote when I'm not on the road for 13, 14 years now. It's been really good for my capability to serve a lot of people. I have a very servant's attitude in my leadership approach. I can impact a lot of people virtually because of the tools and the technologies that are available today. 12, 13 years ago, we didn't have all of the Zoom and the Teams and those types of things as readily available. The internet connectivity of the world wasn't as strong as it is today. Tools to share information, OneDrive and sharing folders and cloud-based solution applications were not near what they were today. They weren't even uh, ideas on napkins yet. So the world has really changed. The working from home is not what I'm talking about. But how we sell and interact etc. And what we sell or provide to accommodate the changes has changed. And it's going to stay changing. I'm in a technology business. One of the things I cherish most about it, and the reason I've been able to stay in it or desired to stay in it for 33 years, is the continuous change. Some people don't do good with change. I get it. But you can't let your life be driven or your attitude be hampered because of change. Because what happens is it makes you make emotional decisions instead of data-driven decisions. You start using your, um, your what-ifs too much mentally versus using your intellect. I had a tough situation this week. Loved the week. Got to see the leaders. Got to spend time with friends. Tons of hugs. God, it was great. Then I had a bad thing happen. I had a very, very good individual contributor on one of my teams decide to leave the organization. And I have very low turnover. The jobs that are on my teams are very, very skilled, very, very tenured individuals. They make very, very, very good livings. And they're good jobs. So this bothered me. So what do I do is, you know, the manager, the, the regional director comes to me and says, this is what's happening. And I said, you got to be kidding me. So I call up this individual contributor and we talk. And he says the reasoning, and whenever you're having those conversations, you're getting partial truths, right? So you got to kind of connect the dots. You got to ask some secondary questions, et cetera. But the basic reasoning was he just wasn't happy. It's because the job has changed, was the first thing he said to me. Not getting in front of people as much. More administrative tasks inside the role at this time. Only problems he seems to be facing all the time. Not, Not having as much fun. This guy is five years from retirement. Early retirement. 59 years old retirement. We discussed this. Huge year already set up for this year. Based on a, a very significant transaction I was very involved with. It's going to bring hundreds of thousands of dollars of income to him. And I said, "Are you? what are you thinking here? Now, money isn't everything. I'm going to talk about that next episode. But you have to have the right mindset. Money is may not buy happiness. I'm going to talk about that misnomer. But it certainly can provide comfort and freedom. 
freedom to do what you like to do. But he had a big year coming. So what he's doing is he's, he's running from and not running to the opportunities of the job. As an individual contributor, he's being very pessimistic and myopic on what he doesn't like versus running to what he does like. Now, as an individual contributor on my teams, in my company, you're responsible for what your day looks like. Instead of having the ho-hums, and I said this to him, instead of having the ho-hums and thinking the job isn't the same it used to be, well, shame on you. Go see some people. The world's opened back up. Take your laptop with you. Guess what? There's administrative tasks. We're a big company. Got to turn in your payroll on your computer. You got to enter the orders in the system. We sell a lot of things we didn't used to sell. So sometimes we got to work on getting the right product numbers and things like that in the system so you can create the order package. What a terrible thing to have to do is spend a couple hours on the computer to bring home $100,000 in earnings. There are people that would just lose their mind right now listening to this. Are you kidding me? Some people work 2,080 hours full-time or 2,300, 2,400 hours, including overtime, to make half that that he has to spend a few hours on. It's all about perspective. He can control it. Now, I want him happy. One of the first things I said to him was, if you are unhappy, I want you happy. There's two ways to approach this. One is to work on creating your happy or run to what you perceive will make you happy. What did he run to? So I started asking him, are you staying in the industry? Well, I don't want to talk about it. Come on, man. You and I have been tied at the hip 10 years. What are you doing? I'm not the boss's boss right now. I'm just Brent. What's going on? Yeah, I'm staying in the same industry. Huh. Okay. Now I'm going to be managing individual contributors. Okay. Now we've talked in the past that leadership was not exactly your forte or what you wanted to, to get involved with. I would have thought you would have got into leadership before you were in your mid-50s if leadership was an aspiration, an aspirational goal for you. So he wants to go into leadership. He's going to be in charge of people. So what he states he didn't like here, remember, was administration, problems, gripes, and not being in front of the customer. <laughs> Maybe you don't realize it, sir, but you just went exponential on all the things you don't like. As a leader, you aren't supposed to be the best sales rep. You aren't supposed to be the one in front of the customer all the time. You know what you are? You're the receiver of all the problems. You're the one that has to handle the reports. You're the one that has to get the item codes in the system for your sellers at this time. So you, you, you think you're going to something better when all it is going to encompass is all the things you say you don't like that you're in complete control of already. And guess what? This is a known where you are now. This guy makes two to $300,000 a year. It's a great, a great rep. Has been for years. He's lost his focus. Now, it's not all about the money. Again, I want him happy. But he is running from something that he's in control of and not embracing some of the changes, not, con taking, con not taking control of his environment and fixing what is driving him crazy. I asked him, why did the last person leave this wonderful role you're being offered? Well, I don't know. Well, maybe it was because it was too hard. Lots of gripes, administrative work. Have you thought about that? No, I just think it's time for a change. Okay, great. I am all for that. What are you changing? Deer in headlights. So, I hope he goes and is extremely successful. There is no hard feelings here at all. I worry for him because he did not choose based on removing emotion, taking a deep breath. We got him slowed down, said, talk to your wife this weekend. Make sure you're doing the right things. I'm sure they dangled a big dollar in front of him in a title, which is great. I hope it goes great. 
but I'm afraid that will have a boomerang effect. I'm afraid in 18 months I'm going to get a phone call and say I've made a mistake. And I'm afraid at that point I'm already going to have someone else in collecting those checks, closing those deals, someone that has the right mindset. I hope it works out for him. I really do. But he ran from, instead of running to, changes. Some people can't get over things that bother them. So they can't see all the good or great things, right? What he needs to see and what I need to do and what we all need to do is you need to look at change as an opportunity. We are a company, my day job, that offers things that I couldn't even contemplate five years ago. Augmented reality, marketing services, media buying. Remember, it's just a big printing company that I started with. I was a copier sales guy. The world has changed, man. Think of how you were communicated to every single day. Emails, text, SMS text, right? Direct links, websites, pearls, personal URLs sent to you, QR codes, mail. All of that is coming from us. We used to be a print company. We're a communication company, man. It's changed a bunch. It's fun, if you let it be. So see change as a chance to get better. See it as an opportunity as it comes at you. I'm going to build new customer relationships. I'm going to get smarter. I'm going to get more experienced with, with things that are going to continue to, to change. I'm going to be more adaptable. The world is changing faster today than it did yesterday than it did the day before, than it did the day before. If you don't like change, you are not going to enjoy life. So you better get your mindset around things that aren't the end of the world are going to be okay. Don't chicken little stuff and think that I've got to do a little more administrative work than I used to is all of a sudden going to change um, you know, your happiness in life. I'm going to talk about happiness a little bit. Remember, I talked about the money situation here. Money doesn't buy happiness. The next episode is going deeper into that, the psychological piece of it, and some, some great science discovery through Nobel Prize winners on what that really means. Hey, everybody, I got an idea for you. Be thankful for what you have. And don't focus on what you don't have. Focus on running to the, to the action you need to take. To get what you want, focus on how you get there. Start concentrating on the journey instead of the end result and making it look like it's impossible to get there. If you sit and look through a telescope at the moon, up in the sky, it's a long, long ways away. You can't even picture being there. But NASA in the 60s, they took a step at a time. Let's build a rocket that can lift a bunch of weight off the ground. Next, let's lift a rocket, or let's build a rocket that can lift heavy stuff off the ground, eject a capsule, deploy a parachute, land safely in the ocean for recovery. Next is, let's build a rocket with that capsule that goes up, releases the capsule, and allows a man to go around the earth several times Come back in, land in the ocean with the parachute. Next, let's build a rocket with a capsule that goes out, spends longer in space, testing things, testing water systems, oxygen creation, etc. Pretty soon, 10, 15 miss missions, men are walking on the moon. They looked at the, you know, on how to get there, the steps that it needed to take to handle the change they've been tasked with. Now, that's a big analogy, but great things happen with big dreams. If you are unhappy, see if you are the cause of the unhappiness with just your outlook on life. Be optimistic. Every time you think you have something bad with you, think about the person that on Monday is going to go see the oncologist and is going to be told they have mere months to live. Be thankful. Learn to forget. Negatives need to be pushed out of your mindset. They only hold back your growth. Learn to be strong mentally to not ruminate 
on things that are no longer controllable or things that have been fixed. Don't be angry at something that happened before that is no longer an issue. Run towards change and opportunity. Be optimistic. Don't be pessimistic. Engage your own mindset to ensure you're giving yourself a great opportunity for growth. Hold that in your family life, your community life too. Look around. Embrace those around you. Embrace your significant others. Tell your kids it's going to be all right. We've got pessimism in this world because kids, Generation Z's are saying, I'm not going to have any children because the earth, you know, is going to be dead by then. Don't believe that crap. The earth's going nowhere. It was here billions of years before us, be here billions of years after us. Life's going to change. We've discussed that. Do not run from what you don't want. Run towards and make it work for you. And the reason I know you all can do this is because you're awesome. Keep that shit up. Talk next week.